how to go from peeing like this to peeing like this. On today's video, I'm going to show you the bottleneck that I finally figured out after multiple times of disassembling the whole thing, buying all new components, reassembling it, and still having the same problem. But I finally figured it out, so I'm going to start off by showing you that. Then I'm going to work through how to go through all the different steps to check your cooling system and get it back to peeing like a racehorse again. Now I finally got it isolated to this as being my problem, this rubber piece. This is the water tube grommet. And originally I thought the only purpose for it was to hold the water tube in place. And that's where the water feeds from the water pump straight up and into the motor. What I didn't realize until I sat down and went through all the water passages to see how this truly functions did I learn that it also has this port built into this rubber grommet. You can see a intake port there and then you also have a port at the bottom of it. And the way it works is the water comes up through the tube from the water pump, injects it into this port here, it shoots upwards into the motor, but also water gets pressurized to go into this hole out this bottom one and there as it goes down into a nozzle down here which comes out the telltale and that's where that p-stream comes out of and if you look at it this is a tiny hole where all the other components are large holes and plus it being soft rubber it catches everything in this bottleneck and that's where been the source of my problems has been now if i take a zip tie and i put it in that hole there and it's created as a 90 degree angle, which makes it even worse. But if I could force that to go in the right direction and follow that contour up, see if this was a hard metal or just a slight bend, it would, this wouldn't be such an issue. Oh, there it goes. And you can see it's having a baby. And there it is. And that is a little seashell that got sucked up in there through the bigger tubes, no problem, but then got down to this little hole and got wedged in there. And depending on the proportions of this or the angle that it's turned, it can let some water out so that you get a little tiny stream or it could be almost fully blocking it where you're just getting a few drips like I was getting it. And regardless of how much you try to blow it out, water pressure it out, it's just wedged in there because that hole is so small, I could barely force it out even with this plastic piece, the zip tie. But that's all it takes. And you can see how much trouble I had just getting that out. So, But that is the problem. For years I've been dealing with this problem and having no clue what was going on. I'd be running it one day, it's fine, and then all of a sudden, just like a light switch, boom, that water stream would shut off and I'd just either get a little stream or barely a trickle, have no clue, bring it home, tear it all down, clean it all up. If I saw something didn't look right, replace the part, put it all together again, and no change, nothing would change. Then I would just say, screw it, go out, and then one day, I would, all of a sudden, it would just, boom, start peeing like a racehorse again. No rhyme or reason. I just could not figure it out until now. I'm pretty sure that's always been the problem I've had because I've always checked everything else, and if it wasn't those, I'd just never check that. So, boom. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to show you all the other hot spots that you can check just to make sure it's not something easy, but just having them back of your mind that if you still can't find the problem, check that. So uh, let me show you. All right, the first step is just to check the telltale. Uh, this little nozzle basically just unscrews. It's a little plastic nozzle. And you could actually look through it or you can actually just blow through it. And if there's any obstruction, I always get a lot of little grass and stuff stuck right there because that's also another bottleneck area. But you can check to make sure that there's no obstruction there. Next, you can just double check. These little ports right here are the water inlets. You have these on both sides. Uh, if you get a ton of weeds blocking this, this could be an issue, but I've really never had that much of a, a problem with these, but it's a quick check. Just make sure it's not solidly packed in algae. Next, 
while I have the uh, telltale nozzle out, I'll actually tilt the motor up while I'm on the water and I'll actually blow into this hole to see if I can dislodge it by just blowing on it. Uh, if I'm at home, I'll take the garden hose with a little spray nozzle and inject water in that hoping to blow any obstruction out. Uh, you could do the same thing if you have an air compressor and an air nozzle. Next, if those basic checks don't work out, then we got to start tearing things apart. So now we're going to focus our attention on the lower end and take a look at the water pump impeller. Um, the guidebooks will say that you have to take the power head off of the top first, undo all those pieces, and then slip the bottom out. But in actuality, you could take these two bolts out and just slide the lower unit straight off. So that's what we're going to do next. Once we've got both of these bolts out, the bottom end will basically just slide right down. Sometimes you'll have to use a screwdriver to pry it, but it'll slide right down. Now the shift lever and the main gear and the water pump are still in the housing, so we're gonna have to tilt this up in order to slide this out. Okay, so I just need to tilt it, and this unit will just slide right out leaving the water tube inside the housing. This is the shift lever and this is the main shaft that's attached to the water pump. So this is what we need to work on next. Now this is the uh, water impeller housing. So we're just going to take these four bolts off and that'll allow us to take a look at that to see what kind of condition it's in. Next we can take the water pump impeller housing, which is this unit, and basically just slide it right up the main shaft and off. We'll take a look inside, make sure there's no cracks or any other issues there. And this is the little sleeve that sits inside the housing here, but also wraps tightly around the water pump impeller, which is below it there. And then we can see our water pump impeller and that will actually just slide straight off as well. Okay, and then that leaves the shaft and this little pin here that goes through and it fits in the notch in the water pump impeller on the bottom of it. And that's when this spins, that turns those, which turns the impeller. And that's how this water pump works. And then it shoots the water up. So let's take this all off. And you can see the notches where those pins sit inside. We can take those off. There's the pin. Now this is just a cover. And it's probably hard to see, though this is a gasket. But this basically just goes straight into just an open housing where these water ports are what feeds the water pump. So this is hollow inside. It's got all these holes here. And it's basically funnels right into this, this housing where the water fills up. And then the water pump sucks it up and pushes it through the motor. So if these were clogged, that would cause uh, problems with water not going in. But that's about it. And that's really it. So... The main thing here you're looking for is just to make sure the impeller is in good condition. All the wings are still solid. It's not overly wrapped over. The ends aren't frayed. Um, the part where the pin goes in isn't stripped out. Make sure the pin looks good, which all these do, which always do because these weren't what the problem was. And then we can go ahead and put it back together again. So assembly is just putting it back in reverse order. Uh, you lay a gasket down first. Then you're going to put the base plate on, then you've got your pin, then we've got our impeller and it's unidirectional because you have to have the slots facing down so it catches those pins. And if you spin it, you'll, you'll feel it kind of find that notch and then sit down even farther. Plus you can check because if you spin the main shaft, then the prop turns. Otherwise it's stuck on there because of the pins. Next, we're going to prep these housing. Okay. The uh, insert 
fits in one spot. It's got a little hole, a notch that it fits into, so it sits uh, perfectly flat there. And then you always gotta remember to add a new O-ring there, because that's gonna seal the pump up to prevent leaks and keep the pressure up. Then we're gonna slide that on. Now the key when inserting the housing is, is to turn the shaft clockwise while you're pressing down on the housing. That gets those fins turning in the correct direction and it'll sit right down. And that's perfect there, okay? Then we just need our bolts to go back in. Tighten those up and we're done. Uh, one other piece you can check is this. This is a rubber grommet that the, the water pump sits in and seals. So if it, that's in rough shape, you can replace it, but mine I already just did, so I know it's brand new. So I'm gonna tighten this down and then uh, let's start putting it back together again. Okay, now assembling it is just a slight trick to it, but still pretty easy. We've got the main shaft connected to the lower end. And if you look inside the main housing here, there's actually a little round bracket that the main shaft has to fit into. Then this is the shift lever. And that just has to fit into the shift hole there. So as long as that fits there, this fits in that center hole. And then that means the only thing we have left is the water tube uh, hose there, the pipe. And that has to sit in here. So the shift lever will fit in no problem. The main shaft will fit in no problem. It's just a matter of getting that water pump tube to fit into this because it's loose in the cylinder. But basically I just lie it down, use a flashlight and a long screwdriver to kind of maneuver it so it's just right centered and then jam it in there and then it's done. If you look right down in the center, you can kind of see the bullseye for the main shaft to go into. So I don't know if this is going to work. Let me get that in there. Find the main shaft, it's in there. Then I just need to align the uh, shift lever into the hole. So that means those two are lined up. I can slide it in there. Then it's just a matter of finding the water pump uh, hole and lining up with the water tube and then jamming it shut. So I'm gonna do that real quick here. Okay, we've got everything lined up. So now I just need to put the two bolts back in. That holds that lower unit together. And that part is done. And then at this point, because we haven't taken the power head off, we can go ahead and fire it up and uh, see if that fixes our problem. Okay, we've checked out our telltale nozzle. We've blown on it. That wasn't the, pro the problem. Then we went down to the bottom end and we checked the water pump impeller, we checked the shaft, we checked all the housing under there, and that wasn't the problem. So that leads us to the top end here and that requires us to remove the power head from the main housing here. And the way you do that, if you look from the bottom, there's actually eight bolts. Now four of them are attached to the plastic housing that attaches to the actual power head. And then there's four bolts that go from just to through the main frame and then up into the power head. We want the ones not attached to the plastic housing. We want the ones that are attached to the main frame. So we're gonna hit those four bolts on the corners and once that's off, then you can remove the power head. And off it goes. Okay, now that we've got the power head off, we can look down into the uh, housing here. Uh, we can see this is the water inlet, this is the water tube, we've got the water tube grommet. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you could pull that straight out and then you can blow into the tube just to make sure that there's no blockage there. Um, you can see this is where the inlet is, where the water comes up the tube, fills this well up and is forced up into the actual motor, okay? But then we get to my favorite part here, which is the grommet. And you can see as that fills up, it actually will pressurize and shoot water through this hole, down through the grommet, down through the bottom of it, and into this hole here, which is the passageway straight out the telltale. And that's where our basic P hole is. So if any of these parts are clogged, then you're gonna have a problem. So that's the main issue that I have. Small little port, tight band, soft rubber, and things are just gonna get stuck there.
Now to install the water tube, you can basically just use a flashlight and then you'll see where it has to mount in the bottom. So if you just line it up perfectly, you'll drop it into that hole and then into the bracket there and just basically press it down. Now last we can check something, but this doesn't have really anything to do with the actual telltale and the P-stream. But in regards to the cooling of the motor is the thermostat that is located right here. So the way you get that is we're going to take off the uh, pull start, cut right off, and then just four bolts and lift this cover up and we have access to the thermostat. And there we're just going to check to make sure that there's no corrosion buildup that's blocking any of the ports. And we could also do a heat test for the thermostat to make sure that it is opening and closing uh, by dropping it in a pan of hot water, slowly cranking it up and watching it as it starts warming up. It'll open up and that'll allow water to passage through the motor after it's warmed up. Uh, I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to disassemble this, but uh, that's how you do it. Three bolts on the pull starter, four bolts on the cover, pop this lid straight off and you'll see the uh, thermostat sitting right there and you can do the test and just put it back real easy. Alrighty, so that's how to get your Suzuki 2.5 horsepower outboard to pee like a racehorse, like the way it's supposed to. So if your uh, outboard is not peeing like a racehorse, those are the steps you got to go through just to see what the issue is. Now, the, the pee coming out of the Telltale is really just a diagnostic tool, a visual tool that you can utilize to see that water is circulating through your motor. And that's all it does. So if that's working in condi good condition, then it's generally thought of that the motor will be kept cool and it'll be running fine since these small outboards don't have a temperature gauge. However, it still wouldn't hurt every once in a while. Check that thermostat. Um, you could actually leave the cover off, fire the motor up, and water will shoot out of there and you know that it's getting good water circulation. The other test on the water that I do is I'm always checking the temperature of the water that's coming out of the pee hole, plus I'm putting my hand on the base of the outboard and just checking to make sure that it's not getting too hot. So a lot of different ways to protect these outboards. So hopefully you found that uh, helpful and uh, yeah. Hopefully you pee like a racehorse. Bye.